Uh, we had started a series uh, last week called What's Next? And if you open your, your, uh, your program there, it says, What's Next? And I answered the question last week, I don't know. I don't know what's next. Only God knows what's next. Mm -hmm. But it said, so we said that we wanted to give you some principles or some processes that you could work through to help you answer that what's next question. Even though there is uncertainty, even though we really don't know what the future holds, we said three things that you can do to help you with that what next question. The first thing that you can do is you can uh, look back and thank God from where he's already brought you. And we spent some time last week in Psalm 77 where the psalmist said he was, uh, he was sleepless, he was in distress, and he was tossing and turning, and he was reaching out his hand to God, and he couldn't find comfort. But about verse number 10 of Psalm 77, he said, then he thought. Mm -hmm. And he thought about all that God had done in his life. And he looked back, and he thought about all that God had done for the children of Israel, and it brought him peace. It brought him uh, comfort. So we also, you're going to look back and to thank God. You're going to look forward to trust God. And then you're going to look up to praise God. And when you can do those things where we're looking back and thanking, thanking God, we're looking forward and trusting God, and we are looking up to praise and thank God, uh, the one next question doesn't have the sting that it might have had other, otherwise. So let's review just again uh, on looking back. On, I have it in your notes right there. It says, looking back, uh, we, I just mentioned it. We don't know what the future holds. But we know who does. We know God. And he, we, I showed you some songs last week in this, in this uh, yellow sheet. We had, I don't know about tomorrow. Uh, many things about tomorrow I, I don't seem to understand. But I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. It says, and uh, because he lives, and because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. So we know who holds the future. And then we said, number B says, we know what he has done for us in the past. And I gave some testimony, and I know each of you have testimony of how God has brought you, how God has provided for you, how God has uh, been a blessing in, in your life. And then C says, I added this one, we know what his word says. We know what he told us in his word. And I just put, I picked out three things. Uh, we learned last week from uh, Matthew chapter 6. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And said, don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow has enough, today has enough trouble of its own that you're already worrying about tomorrow. So I put there, we're not, he told us in his word not to worry about tomorrow. And then we, we found out, uh, and I gave you a verse there, John 16, he says, I have told you these things so that in me you will have peace. In this world you will, it's not maybe you will, he says, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. I already, I'm already victorious over all those things. So we know that we will have some troubles. And if we go to, I, I wish I had time to go to uh, James. James says, count it all joy when you enter various trials and tribulations because those tribulations were perseverance of patience in your life. And then we found out also, uh, according to Hebrews, that he will never leave us or forsake us. He might all, not always relieve us of the troubles, but he will be with us in the middle of those troubles. Yes. And then in Philippians, we found out that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And that's just a short list. And there's so many other promises that we have of what God told us in his word that he will do for us. So let's talk about looking forward. And I want to hold up for you. I'm going to read them real quick for you. I'm going to hold up these two scriptures. And I'm going to, uh, I, I think I'm going to pull some principles or, or, or some, some, some things from, that we learned from these two passages of Scripture that will help us as we look 
forward, okay? Number one, you hear this one a lot about this time of year from, from Paul. In Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14, it says, Not that I have already obtained all this, and I, 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 it would be great if you would go back and uh, read Philippians 3 and see what the, that all this is, but I don't have time to go through all of this. But it says, Not that I have obtained all of this, or have already arrived at my goal. But I press on. Notice that word, underline, highlight that word. I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting Somebody say forgetting. forgetting. Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for Christ. Excuse me, to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward, heavenward in Christ Jesus. Yes. I, I forgive me for stumbling sometimes. When you memorize scripture in another version, <laughs> you stumble because you think you know the next word, but the next word is different in this version. <laughs> yes. Amen. Amen. So that's why I stumble sometimes. In Hebrews chapter 12, I want to show you this. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. Now, I, I memorize that. It says, let us throw off the, I like this word, and I, I'll use this word later. In, in, in the version that I memorize in scripture, it says, throw off the weights yes. and the sins that so easily beset us. Yes, yes, yes. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Fixing you had you a point in the future. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. The pioneer and perfecter of our faith. In the verse I remember, I says, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning his shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him. So when you're looking forward, consider Jesus who endures such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So let's, let me show you some principles, some, some things, that, some truths that I extracted from those two scriptures that will help us in looking forward. Number one is that we got to recognize that none of us are there. Right. That's right. You, remember the two guys that go up to the temple to pray? And the one guy looks over at the other guy and says, God, I, I'm glad I'm not like him. I fast. I tithe. I'm glad I'm not like him. It says, but the other guy, he just, this King James said, he smote his head against his breast. He just looked down and he said, God have mercy upon me, a sinner. And he said, the scripture says that the man that humbled himself and said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner, he went to his home justified. But this other guy, full of pride, didn't receive it when he could have received because he was prideful. And what that teaches me is that I can look around and see people that I'm Airports better than. But when you stand before God, none of us are there. I can say, well, I'm more righteous than, I'm more righteous than. When you stand in front of God. Amen. Someone said it this way, God. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. Because all of us are in need of a Savior. Mm. So, none of us, Paul said, I, I haven't got there yet. I'm, all, uh, I'm pressing. I'm straining for, but I'm not there, and none of us are. Then he said, I forget what's behind. Now, that's confusing, because last week I said to what? Remember mm -hmm. what's behind. 
There are some, and we said it last week, there are some things that, are, that we can look back on and draw on and it will propel us into the future. When I think about, like I talked about last week, when I t- think about what God's done for me, that encourages me to keep moving forward. Yes, yes. But Don, there are some things in my past that... Mm. Leave it in the past. Mm. So I put there, when he says, forget those things that are behind, he's not saying that there's some way that you can erase those memories because you can't. But he says, I want you, through the power of God and his Holy Spirit, to break the power that those past things have on you. Yeah. Ooh, that's worth the price of a mission right there. Yeah. If you got something in your life that has become a weight, and you can't move forward because that garbage, that baggage is holding you back. You need to eradicate that. Yes, Amen. yes, Amen. yes. That's right. Yeah, yeah. See, because you have an enemy who always wants you to look back. Mm-hmm. Oh, you remember what you did in 75. You remember what you did in 1980. You remember what you did to this person. You remember what you said. And he wants you to be bogged down with that garbage, with that baggage, for which Christ has already forgiven you. Yes, yes. yes. Amen. He said in the, in the Psalms, he'll cast our sin as far as the east is from the west. And Columbus taught us that if you go one way, you're going to end up the other place. So those will never meet. Mm-hmm. Amen. That's how far you're, it's like a dog chasing his tail. You, they won't, you can't catch it. Because he's cast it that far away from you. So Paul says, I'm forgetting those things. Because I used to persecute the church. I used to lock them up. I, I went on the road to Damascus to find them, to lock them up. But i got to put those things behind me because they become weights. And in, in that Hebrew verse, it says, throw off the weights and sins. That's right. That's right. Amen. So I want to make, make mention of this. In both of these examples, the one from Hebrews, and i got to slow down. And the one from Philippians, Paul is using uh, the analogy of an athlete, of a runner. And when people are getting ready to run, they buy running shoes. Those, those are the lightest and the best shoes. And they wear shorts, and they usually take off all that heavy gear, so they, they're freed up to run. And so if you're looking to the future, you got to free up. So he says, I'm not looking back. I'm not going to be controlled by what's back there. Besides, you can't live in the past. And, and I put a little note there. Good or bad. Yes. Yeah. When you get my age, sometimes you Melody, when you get my age, sometimes you gotta live in the past. When you when you when you had hair and you were strong, you, you, you're trying to live back there. No, 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 you can't live back there. That's gone. Uh, yeah. They're memories. <laughs> That's stuff gone. I can't live on yesterday's. Mm. So Paul said, I'm forgetting that. If it's bad stuff, I forget it. Even some of the good stuff I forget because I can't live in the past. Right. Can I just give you this word? You can't live in 2020. No. 2020 is gone. Will 2021 be the same or worse? I don't know. But I can't live in 2020. My goodness. No. Can't live in 2019 or 2018 or whatever, whatever year that thing happened to you or you did. Am I making a point here? Yes. If you want to move forward, you gotta, you gotta forget those things that are in the past. And then Paul said, "This term. Have you ever seen? I know Joy goes out and run. Uh, and so if you're looking at the Olympics or you're looking at races, sometimes someone told me this. I, I've never been a real runner. He said sometimes in the in the midst of the race, you hit a wall." It's where your body is screaming, stop, it hurts. Mm-hmm. When, when your lungs are burning, mm-hmm. 
And that's like from here to the door to me. <laughs> but for somebody that runs in the, in the 15th or the 20th mile, that might start happening. And you got to press through that. That's a picture. Yes, yes. If you want to move into 2021 and sing that song, I'm going all the way. If you want to move into 2021 and sing that song, there's greater things yet to be done. Yes. There'll be some days ahead where you have to press. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. You can't just sit back and do this thing by remote control. <laughs> There'll be some things where you have to press. Oh my God. So this is what I'm suggesting to you. Some of you, I don't, I don't know. I, this, some, some people don't like this kind of thing, but I think it's important. Let's make clear goal and clear plans for what we have going forward. You said, Ron, you just told us it's uncertain, so how can we make plans? It is uncertain. But check this out. How many of you have auto insurance? Mm -hmm. Now, how, how many of you remember when we were in school? And they would say, today we're having a fire drill. How many of you at home uh, uh, have water and uh, uh, a, a medical uh, uh, kit and a flashlight put away and candles and matches so that, what are those? Yeah, emergency. Those, those are plans. So that if, the, if there was a fire, that's why it's marked exit, so we know how to get out. So we don't know when a fire is coming. We don't even know if a fire is coming. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I don't even know when or where or how it might happen. But when it happens, I want to be ready. Yes. Right. Yes, yes, yes. So that means I want to be prayed up today so whatever happens tomorrow, good or bad, I don't have to get ready. I stay ready. Yes, yes. Amen. Imagine when the, when the lights go out and you're looking for, you're trying to find matches, you're trying to find a candle. Mm. The, the time to get ready is now. So if you want to do great things for God in, the, in the, this year, the time to get ready is Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm preaching as hard as I can. So we make plans. We make clear plans. Okay. And so what are what are what are what we 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 kind of figure out some things that we put in that 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 uh, when I, I love I love spy movies. <laughs> and, and 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 on the spy movies, and those guys are a secret agent. They already have. They always have a gold bag. <laughs> it's got a bunch of pair, passports in it. <laughs> it got some money in it. <laughs> it got a change of clothes in it. Got a gun in it. So if I have to get up and go, I don't have to run home and start packing. I, I got a bag already. Spiritually speaking, that's what I'm saying to you. Yeah. And so what do I want to put in my bag? Or how I'm going to plan for it? First of all, I'm going to plan based on what I know of God. We, already, we know that he's never going to leave us or forsake us. We know that trouble will come. We know that he can help us through. But as I'm planning for this year, God's got to be right in the middle of it. Second thing, uh, we talked about that. We get ready. We want to get ready. We don't want to just get ready. We want to stay ready. And as you go, guess what? Plans can be revised. Check, check this out. My wife, 
I can't, I can't do it, but she loves to watch the cooking shows. And she likes the one, ones with competition. She likes the one with gro the grocery games where you go buy a, 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 a basket from somebody coming out of a supermarket and whatever's in the basket, you have to make something out of it. So whatever comes your way, you have to. And sometimes that means, well, I was planning to use this ingredient, but since I don't have that ingredient, I gotta make this one work. Old Navy scene, scene. Those who fail to plan, plan to fail. Plan to fail. I got some more, but I see time. we're getting close. So we have to probably have to take it up. But let me just let me just share this part of it with you. Kind of an example. And we'll, we'll carry an example for the next week. For me. I read this in a devotion uh, recently. For me, what's my goal for this year? I wrote it for you. Now, that's just the, how do you say, that's the, the upper level of my goal. You know, you know what I'm trying to say? That's the, that's the, if you were doing Roman, num Roman, Roman numbers, that's Roman number one. But then I got some sub points under that. Are you, so, <laughs> let me tell you about this one. It's so exciting. My goal for this year, Pam, is to be the best version of me that I can be. Yep. Oh! Amen. I can't be the best version of Don. Don's a great man of God, but I can't be a best version of man. I can't be a best version of Warren. I can only be the best version of me. Amen. That's right. And that's what I'm saying to God. I want to be the best version of me based on what? Rick Warren gave us this, this acronym called SHAPE. Mm -hmm. I want to be the best version of me based on my spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. I want to be the best version of me based on the heart that I have for God. I want to be the best version of me based on the abilities that God has given me. I want to be the best version of me based on the personality that God's given me. I want yes. to be the best version yes. of me yes. based on the experiences in my life. Yes, yes, yes. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes. Y'all yes. yes. none of y'all have been a poor black child born in Louisiana. I am. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I is. Uh. What? Amen. I want to be the best pastor I can be. Amen. I want to be the best husband I can be. Amen. I want to be the best friend that I can be. I want to be the best man of God that I can be. Yes. That's what I want to be pressing towards. Yes, yes, yes. So when, he, when I see him, I hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> With the yes. gifts and the ability and the talent and the heart that I gave you. Yes, you Lord. did the best with it that you could. Yes. I gave you five, you gave five. I gave you two. Yes, 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 Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. Oh, my God. Thank oh. you, Father. And if you're the best version of you, mm -hmm. Warren and Sherry and Rhonda and Manella and Mary and Janice and Melody, yes. I'm out of breath, I can't came, keep going. If you're the best version of you, yes, yes. and I'm the best version of me, watch out. Amen. Amen. Because you have gifts and abilities that complement mine. And when we're working together, as Paul said, using our gifts and our abilities together, watch out. Amen. We can make a difference in this world. Yes. yes. Amen. Yes. Let's pray. Father, thank you. I know you know tomorrow, God. You told us not to worry about tomorrow. 
but to seek you first. And all your righteousness and everything else will be added. That's what we want to do. Yes. So we thank you again for allowing us to see into 2021. Let us be the best version of a New Caesars Church that we can be. Thank you, Lord. Not for us to get glory. Not, us, not for us to get fame. But you said, if I, if I be lifted up. Yes, Lord. I'll draw all men to me. Thank you, Jesus. This is our prayer.